All right, let's take a look here at vulnerabilities. This is really kind of the starting point for hackers. In order to be able to exploit something, they have to know of a vulnerability first. Uh, so they either look for those vulnerabilities or they'll take a known vulnerability and then they'll write some kind of programming code against it. That's very often how it happens or some kind of a script or something like this. So what happens here? Well, first of all, there, again, there has to be a vulnerability for them to exploit. And what is a vulnerability? Uh, kind of as the name implies, it's a weakness. It's a defect in operating systems, in software. It could be in a driver. It could be in uh, hardware. So even hardware has software that's written into it, right? Normally, hardware will have circuits on it. And on those circuits is very often embedded code of some type, okay? Now, anyway, these defects are ultimately security loopholes that hackers can then exploit. And it's to be expected that there's going to be vulnerabilities. Uh, all of this stuff's written by humans, but some of it's so huge, it's very difficult to manage. So, for example, uh, Windows 11, Windows 11, I'll put that up there, uh, that has about 50 million lines of code in it. Now, even though Microsoft has a well-paid army of programmers, that's a lot of code. <laughs> Something's going to slip through the cracks, and it does, and then Microsoft will have to issue a patch for it or something. Another example, um, well, Google, Google itself. I'll just put Goog. Uh, Google itself has about 2 billion lines of code across all of their uh, various services and systems that they offer. So that's just way too much for anybody to be able to go through even using artificial intelligence and other methods, uh, there's going to be a weakness there eventually that's going to be found. And then once a hacker finds that weakness, then they will exploit it. Uh, let's take a look here at some hardware examples. Uh, yes, vulnerabilities exist on hardware. Why is that? Well, if you take a look at it, you'll have embedded circuits on hardware that a programmer has written something for. A good example would be maybe an Internet of Things device. I OT, Internet of Things. So, for example, I've got on my wall right behind me over here somewhere a thermostat. That thermostat's connected to the Internet, and I can control it here from my iPhone. So let's say, you know, here in Phoenix, it gets quite hot in the summer, and we might like to keep our, our air conditioning set at 72 degrees, which means it runs constantly, because even at midnight, it can be 100 degrees here. So anyway, but somewhere in there is a chip or a circuit of some kind that con contro contains, or that is, that contains code on it that controls all that stuff, that allows it to interoperate with the internet and my phone and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, there could be a weakness on there, and so an evil hacker person out here on the internet, they might find that weakness through the internet, find their way onto that, that code or onto that programming, and then from there they might be able to leapfrog to other systems, maybe my, you know, my laptop here, it's supposed to be a laptop. Uh, one thing you'll find out quickly as you join me in this course is I have very unique artistic skills, which is another way of saying that they're terrible. Anyway, there's my laptop. Maybe they could leapfrog over that and exploit this thing. Maybe they could leap, leap over to my phone or over to, you know, an iPad or something like this. So, you see, very often a hacker only needs to find one little thing that's got a weakness in it, and then they can kind of leapfrog from one thing to the next and escalate privileges and lots of other kinds of things. Let's take a look at some hardware examples there as well. Uh, Rowhammer is one of those. It's kind of pretty well known and it's been out for a little while now. But if you take a look at a memory module, this would be like a memory module. You've seen those probably in computers. I don't know where that came from. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> uh, you've probably seen that in various computers, like uh, personal computers, where this will get inserted into the motherboard and on these memory modules are various cells, okay? They're actually, they actually appear on the little black chips that you see on there, those circuits, those uh, little chips that are on there. And uh, in those chips are cells, and the way that memory works is there's an electrical charge that gets written to these. Okay, I'll make a little different color here so it'll make it a little more clear. So there's an electrical charge that might get written to that one. It's all binary, so something's turned on or turned off. And in computing... A combination of items that are turned on and off ultimately results in something. It might be the letter A, or it might be a graphic, or a photograph, or something like this. All Any different kinds of things. Anyway, it's all done by turning on or off one of these cells. Well, hackers have figured out a way using this Rowhammer thing to be able to corrupt data. They can 
maybe I've got valid data here that checks out that's good data, but they might be able to exploit a cell next to it and hammer it. That's why it's called row hammer. Hammer it with signals so fast and so hard that it can corrupt this data next to it. So anyway, that's an example of one of the hardware exploits. There's another one called Meltdown Inspector. These, that's why I kind of got these graphics up here. They, they're so famous that they even allow you to download graphics advertising these particular exploits. And it's so famous, it even has a web page. And here it is. I'll bring it over. Here it is. So you can see what happens here is that it exploits vulnerabilities in modern processors. Now, these are hardware vulnerabilities that could allow programs to steal data, which is currently processed on the computer. What happens here is that normally you'll have an application that's running and that application has data that it works with. Let's say you have, I don't know, an open spreadsheet, okay? That spreadsheet is accessed by, say, Microsoft Excel, and it should be the only program that properly accesses that data. But Meltdown Inspect Inspector are able to use other methods so that they could kind of hop over and access that data, even though they're not supposed to be able to access it. They actually have some good examples of how this works, by the way. Um, and this was actually, these were actually discovered by some really smart people over at Google, actually. Uh, Google has something called Project Zero. I think it's, uh, there it is. So Jan Horn and uh, did this when he's with Google Project Zero. They're the ones that look for a lot of security vulnerabilities and things like this. But anyway, you can see here, there's a lot of pretty good FAQ there. And this is pretty interesting. Uh, if you look at this, it actually shows Meltdown in action. This is a screenshot of it. But this is all, all the registers within memory, a memory dump, and it's able to actually pull data out of it. You can see kind of somewhat readable data over here. It's able to pull that out of it. Uh, this is a good example right over here. Actually, let's just take a look at this. This is uh, an exploit against a password manager. So we'll talk more about those later on, but a password manager is really actually a pretty good way to take a lot of complicated passwords that no human can really remember. And, you know, these big, long, complicated passwords that we're supposed to have for every different website we go to and all this stuff. Uh, it can be stored in a password manager, which is normally a good idea, but using Meltdown, you can, they're d demonstrating here how that someone could enter in, see they're entering in their password, unlock their password manager, and it actually shows up down here in this exploit. Okay? Uh, here, in this other example, they're able to actually reconstruct an image that someone's using. Okay, I won't go through it here, but you can see it also reconstructing a photo. So in other words, it's able to access data that it's not supposed to be able to access. And like I said before, <laughs> it's such a famous uh, vulnerability. They even have logos and stuff like that <laughs> that you can download. Now, let's take a look at another uh, vulnerability. I mentioned earlier that there might be something embedded in hardware, like an Internet of Things device. That would just be a vulnerability there. But there's sometimes when there's actually malicious code embedded in hardware. I first became aware of this oh, a few years back. Uh, there's a news program here called 60 Minutes in the United States, and uh, they ran a special on this where uh, there's a company called Huawei. It's got a weird spelling. I'll show it to you here in a minute. Uh, it's a Chinese company, and they're actually embedding malware into their own hardware that they then sell to the unsuspecting American public and the United States military. <laughs> As a result, it's able to pull out data uh, while it's going across the wire, while it's going across routers and things like this, because they build network equipment. So in other words, they put on their network equipment spyware that is able to siphon off data as it's transiting their networks and send it to China or whatever target that they have designated there. There's how you spell Huawei that I was mentioning earlier. And I'll, I'll link this down below for you beneath this video somewhere so that you can see it. But Huawei has uh, circuitry and, and embedded uh, spyware, apparently, that they've put on mobile devices, network equipment, all kinds of things. And you can see, if you want to read through this, you can. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, the United States government is trying to ban the products uh, from Huawei, in fact, although it's been going on for years. In my view, it's kind of a little bit too little too late. Here's another example. I almost forgot to show you this one. Uh, Vodafone found hidden backdoors in Huawei equipment. Now, this happened a little while ago, but the, a lot of that equipment is still out there. This article is dated 2019, and even though they've been called out many times, they still have a lot of this equipment out here, out there. Um, here's another one relating to Australia. Uh, with this one, Huawei installed malicious code on an Australian network, and it's in their telephone network. 
It recorded all communications and transmitted it to China. So, without beating this dead horse, I just wanted to point out, I'm not just against Huawei on this, although they've been doing some dastardly deeds. Uh, I'm just saying that there are either weaknesses or outright exploits directly on some hardware devices that could also be exploited. Now, most of the exploits will take place against software, and I think we're kind of very well aware of that probably. That's why you have, uh, probably on a weekly basis, updates to your Windows machines because they'll have security patches that address some of their weaknesses. Same would be true of your iOS devices, your, your um, Android phones, your tablets, all that kind of stuff. So the operating systems there or software on those devices will have a weakness that will then get a patch. Now, there's something else here as well. The SYN full knock. SYN is a network communication where it will send out uh, uh, a communication to a destination right over here. And the destination normally replies with an acknowledgement that they received that network communication. We'll talk more about that possibly uh, well into the future here. But this kind of an exploit right here is against the Internet Network Operating System. That's not Apple's iOS. That's Internet Network Operating System of Cisco. Now, how did this kind of thing get released? <laughs> what happens here is if you download your updates from Cisco, you're going to be fine. Okay? There was an update that was supposed to be from Cisco that was masquerading as an authentic update from Cisco for, the, uh, for their operating system, which controls their various network devices, and apparently it wasn't actually from them. I don't know if uh, somebody got an email that purported to be from Cisco. It was a fake email that said, click here to download the latest update for your router, and someone might have clicked on it, and instead they got this vulnerability that would then exploit that operating system, and then from there, they can again scoop out your data and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.